In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at uh, reducing fractions to lowest terms. And what uh, reducing fractions to lowest terms means is that you're going to write an equivalent fraction that with the numerator and denominator, the top and bottom numbers, as small as possible. And uh, so we're going to start, I'm going to start with a, an example that uh, has is more of a real world um, example or implication of writing fractions or, and reducing them. And then we'll get into some examples on the next page. So let's say we have, consider this image at the right. If you count them, there's 20 stars here all together, uh, and 10 of them are red and 10 of them are blue. Um, the, um, if, uh, if you have any issues with, uh, with color, uh, the ones that are, have the border here are the, are the blue ones. The ones that are solid are the red. So we could say there's uh, 10 that are solid and 10 that have a border instead. So the, now, if you were asked what fraction of them have a border or a fraction of them are blue, you might answer that 10 twentieths of them are blue or have the border around them. Now, if you told somebody 10 twentieths, uh, it might not be as meaningful as if you reduce the fraction it's because the numbers are larger than they really need to be. So this is what you do when you're reducing fractions is you divide the same number into the top and the bottom. And 10 and 20 are both uh, even numbers, so they would divide evenly by 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 20 divided by 2 is 10. And now notice that I'm dividing by the same number. If you're dividing by the same number, it's really the same as dividing by 1. That's why the fractions are actually equivalent. They still represent the same part of something. Now, 5 and 10, that's not reduced to lowest terms yet because 5 divides into both 5 and 10. Any number that ends in 5 or ends in 0 is divisible by 5. So if I divide 5 by 5, I get 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. So 1 half is the lowest terms. And the reason that 1 half is lowest terms is because there's nothing left, whole numbers wise, that divides evenly into both 1 and 2. Now I'm going to talk about getting, instead of going a couple of steps, uh, how do you get there directly? You see, if you divide 10 and 20 both by 10, 10 divided by this 10 on top is 1. 20 divided by the 10 in the denominator is 2. So you go directly from here to here rather than having to do a couple of different division steps. Now t the uh, 10, this 10 is said to be the greatest common factor, or if you see it's often abbreviated GCF, the first letter of each of these words, is the, is the greatest common factor of 10, which means it's the largest factor or number that divides evenly bo into both 10 and 20. So if you divide by the greatest common factor, you'll get to the lowest terms in one step rather than multiple steps. And before we get into the examples on the next page, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if I rearrange this diagram with the red stars on top and the blue in the, in the bottom, or the solid ones on top and the ones with the border in the, in the, in the bottom, uh, it, then I, I've divided them into two equal parts, and one of the two parts is blue or has the border here. So that's what the one half means. So if somebody asked you what fraction of them are blue or have the border, uh, one of two parts or one half of them has is like that. So here's some examples on the next page. Where it says reduce, reduce each of the following to lowest terms. So I'm going to talk more about the greatest common factor, especially through the example A and B here, and then we'll use that in the last five examples. So 4 and 12, see they both are even, so they divide even by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. But you see they're both even. So I could divide them by 2 again. And so 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 in the denominator is 3. So 1 third is the lowest terms of 4 twelfths. Again, there's no other common factor for 1 and 3, so uh, it's as low as possible. So since I divided by 2 f twice, 2 times 2 is 4. So if you want to go directly from here to here, divide 4 by 4 to get 1 in the numerator, and 12 divided by 4 is 3 in the denominator. So that will get you there directly. Now as sort of an extreme example, I'm going to take a look at B here. We have this fraction 64, 128. So somebody, you know, if you told somebody the fraction 64, 128, it probably wouldn't have a lot of meaning to them because the numbers are pretty big. It's hard to, to actually visualize 64 objects of 128 objects. Now, 64 and 128 are both even, so we can divide them by 2. 64 divided by 2 is 32. 128 divided by 2 is 64. But you see, these are both even, so we can divide them by 2 again. 
32 divided by 2 is 16, and 64 divided by 2 is 32. But they're both even, too. So we divide them by 2 again and get 8 sixteenths. And you see 8 and 16 are both even, so we can divide by 2 again to get 4 eighths. And they're both even, so divide them by 2 again to get 2 fourths. I hope you don't have to do this too many times because this, this is pretty long. So now, so I divided by two, what, six times, I guess it was? So the lowest terms of 64 128 is one half. See, there's a much larger uh, greatest common factor uh, than dividing by two a whole bunch of times. So you see two times two times two times two times two times two is actually 64. So 64 is the greatest common factor of 64 and 128. So if I divide 64 by 64, I get one. And 128 divided by 64 is 2. And I go directly from here to here rather than having to do six steps. So always look for that greatest common factor. And that's what I'm using the last five examples here. So uh, 12 and 18. So, you know, if your times table isn't the greatest, you could think, well, let's see now, if I divide by 2 and 18 divided by 2, I get 6 over 9. But you see, those both divide even by 3. Uh, so I can divide by the actually 6 because dividing by 2 and dividing by 3, 2 times 3 is 6. So dividing 12 by 6 and dividing 18 by 6, 2 thirds would be the lowest terms. So dividing by 6, 12 divided by 6 is 2, 18 divided by 6 is 3, so that's the lowest terms for 12, 18. So for question D here, the uh, 35 fourteenths, um, they're not both even, so 2 wouldn't go into them. Uh, so does 3. Well, we could check. Let me bring my calculator back here. Uh, 35 divided, if you didn't know your times table well. You see, it doesn't divide evenly, but 35, oh, 35 does divide evenly by 7. And so does 14. So 14 divided by 7 gives me 2. So that will reduce to uh, 5 over 2. So if we divide them both by 7, uh, we get 5 halves. Uh, 24 and 36, again, they're even, but there's a larger common factor besides 24 and 36. If you think of your 12 times table, 12, uh, 24 is a multiple of 12, and so is 36. See, that's 2 dozen, and that's 3 dozen. So we can divide them both by 12. So 24 divided by 12 is 2, and 36 divided by 12 is 3. In F here, uh, 15 25ths, uh, they both end in 5, so 5 will go into both of those. So if we divide 15 by 5, we get 3 in the numerator. 25 divided by 5 is 5 in the denominator. Uh, for G, 22, 77, so that one's a little different. Now, 22 is even, so 2 will go into it, but 77 isn't. Uh, when you see a, a, a two-digit number that the two digits are the same, it's divisible by 11. Uh, 22, 55, 77, 44, 99. So 22 divided by 11 uh, is 2, and 77 divided by 11 is 7. So that's how, uh, how that one reduces the lowest terms. And a couple things I want to show you uh, with uh, calculators. So um, uh, some calculators will actually reduce a fraction to lowest terms, like uh, let's do A up here, the 4 twelfths. Now if I just divide 4 by 12, the calculator is going to tell me it is a decimal. So if I go 4, and you have to find out where this is in your calculator if it is there. In this calculator, it's in under fraction. So see, there's the 1 third. And actually, I have, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to bring up a video here. This is my, um, uh, a cal another calculator I have, it's a Casio. And if you look in the calculator here, you see this button right here? So that's the kind of thing you're probably looking for. So that's how you type a fraction here. You can actually do lots of arithmetic with this one. So I'm gonna play this short little video. So if you, uh, if you hit that button, and then you type in the numbers. So I'm gonna do the, uh, the 12 18 so one, so type 12, and then I hit the down arrow here to get in the, in the bottom, and type in the 18, and hit the equal sign, you see it tells me two-thirds. That's my two-thirds right here. So I'm going to do the 64, 128 here as well. So if you type in the 64 and then the down arrow button to get to the denominator and then type in the 128 and hit the uh, equals, see there's the, uh, there's the one half that we got. So, so that's how you reduce to lowest terms. And that's the end of the tutorial.